ये ब्रेक के बाद भी हमने किया था ओके okay. uh, there is one modification which need to need uh, to be done basically if you subtract the yt minus 1 on both side you will get this thing yt minus yt minus 1 uh, this is equal to rho yt minus 1 minus yt minus 1 plus epsilon t so you can write this as del yt is equal to here the rho minus 1 into yt minus 1 plus epsilon t okay so uh, i can write this as del yt is equal to rho star into yt minus 1 plus epsilon t so what was your hypothesis the hypothesis was rho equal to 1 if rho is equal to 1 this was your null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis is rho is less than 1 so if uh, rho is equal to 1 then rho star will become 1 minus 1 0 and if rho is less than 1 the rho star will become less than 0 so the hypothesis is transformed it into rho star equal 0 versus rho star less than 0 this means unit root and this means stationary so so far uh, you have uh, the idea how to apply unit root but there are some there are many other problems as well in the whole this analysis what are those problems for example uh, we have discussed that you may have a generalization uh, this is your generalization why t is equal to alpha plus rho y t minus 1 plus epsilon t this is called uh, you, you have intercept here and you may have a third format y t is equal to alpha plus beta t plus rho y t minus 1 plus epsilon t this is your intercept plus trend and in all these cases the stationarity is depending on rho in all three scenario the first scenario is yt is equal to rho yt minus 1 plus epsilon t in the in these three scenarios if rho is less than 1 then you have you uh, stationary uh it's more appropriate to term as trend stationary because in the third scenario you don't have absolute stationarity you are going to discuss yt this is del yt understand uh, from from this calculation you have to infer about this yt and even if this is uh, uh, stationary this can have some other thing if it is white nice this is having other properties because this is dependent on leg okay so uh, you have trend stationarity for that you require this rho to be less than 1 and for the unit root you require this rho to be equal to 1 but the issue is what should you what is the most appropriate regression that you will use 
should you use this form or this form or this form? Which form is most appropriate? This is a question. So, whenever there is a question and you are finding the answer on the basis of statistics, there is some probability of error. Type 1 error or type 2 error, etc. And if you are doing the procedure two times, the probability of these errors will accumulate. And if you are doing the procedure three times, the probability of error will increase further. So ultimately you don't know what is the probability of error. All these things become so vague that uh, it is very hard to conclude something sensible out of the data that you have used. For example, first we have to decide should I use equation number one or equation number two or equation number three. And then there is one more decision as well. Basically what happens, uh, so far we have assumed that this epsilon t is a uh, white nice. Okay. If this is not white nice, if this is having autocorrelation but this is stationary, again you will have same phenomena. If epsilon is uh, stationary uh, means there is autocorrelation, then what will happen? Again, uh, rho is determining the uh, status into I0 or I1. But for this, you have to specify how many autocorrelated legs are there. If there are two autocorrelated legs, you are including one, then the power will be lost. If there is one autocorrelated leg, you are including two, again power will be lost. So this is another decision which you have to make. So all these decisions give you some probability of errors. It may be type 1 error or it may be type 2 error. But collectively all these probabilities of error will sum up to very huge probability of error and you don't know what, uh, what exactly the probability is. Because for the real data you don't know what exactly is the data generating process. When you don't know, you don't know what, which scenario is most appropriate. That gives you the... I have my own perspective on this which is different from what is written in the books. And I will explain my perspective in details because this is otherwise not available in the books. Basically what happens, Suppose you have a series like this, yt equal alpha plus beta t plus yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. Here the coefficient is 1. I am back substituting value of this thing. It will become equal to alpha plus beta t plus alpha plus beta t minus t uh, 
plus uh, y t minus 2 plus epsilon t. I have put the value of y t minus 1 according to this formula here. Okay. So, what it has become? This is 2 alpha plus 2 beta uh, basically this big Where is epsilon t minus 1? Oh, here is epsilon t minus 1. And in this way, if you bake substitute, every time you will get accumulation of this. And when you get accumulation, basically this becomes, there is t plus 2t plus 3t plus 4t, and so on. If you back substitute to the end, you will get the things like this. And uh, this is equal to, there is a, uh, any, uh, basically this is harmonic series, uh, arithmetic series, and if you take the sum of this thing, this will become t into t plus something. So ultimately it will converge to t square. 